Hey, welcome to the shop. Today we're going to talk about the F6F Hellcat from Hangar 9 and not necessarily build it, but probably going to fly it too. So the F6F Hellcat from Hangar 9 has been out on the market for about what, two, three years now. Uh, there are plenty of replacement parts, uh, upgrade parts. Uh, they even still offer you know all the retracts for it and everything, which is fantastic. Uh, this is a good size model. It's 15cc uh, gas or roughly about 60cc glow uh, in size, and it's a sport scale model. It doesn't have things like you know uh, an airfoil airfoiled tail in any way. But uh, again, it's got some real potential. For those who are new to the channel, you know that uh, you may not know that I am not new to uh, Hangar 9 and modifying their airplanes. Uh, I've, I've had several now, and uh, I, I see a lot of potential in these ARFs to do some really fun details. So I'll go over some of those, um, but just to kick things off, there are no surprises in the build of this model. Everything is straightforward right out of the manual. They're, the gluing techniques, the epoxy techniques, uh, everything f from beginning to end is just spot on exactly how I would assemble it. You can't go wrong just by following the, ex the instructions verbatim. From there, the only real complaints that I have, um, not a whole lot of complaints actually. Um, like I said, everything just screws together. There's there's really simple approaches to things. Nothing's too overly complicated. So this is a great ARF Warbird for the first time uh, ARF assembler for a Warbird. It just everything is super, super straightforward and you got a lot of uh, basic techniques under your belt that you can implement as you put this model together. Now, I did not use all of the recommended equipment on this model. Um, I am using the E-Flight uh, rotating retracts. I am using their sprung landing gear, uh, which is also like almost as much as the model <laughs> itself uh, in terms of parts. But regardless, uh, this should prove to be a very fun sport scale model to fly. In terms of power, the E-Flight Power 60 will power this airplane just fine, more than enough power for this model. Uh, I am using the uh, flight test monster radial along with a master air screw 16 by 8 prop. <laughs> um, uh, I've got an 80 amp ESC and uh, running this on six cells. I'll be running a six cell 6,000 milliamp hour pack. The model goes together great. I'm expecting it to fly great. Really no issues, no headaches. Um, the canopy glue application was fine. The, the covering I have not touched up yet. This is straight out of the box. Uh, once I get it back from the field and it, I know that it flies well, I'll go through the effort to uh, touch up the covering film before I apply any decals to this. Now, the two things that I did upgrade, uh, primarily the wheels. I get that all companies are trying to do cost savings efforts and one of the easy ones on these models is the wheels and um, while I understand that the cost savings are real for these companies uh, I prefer something a little bit nicer so I did upgrade to Robart wheels now these wheels are about thirty dollars shipped to your door uh, give or take a few bucks but uh, the difference is night and day uh, number one, you get a sturdier wheel in terms of the hub, in my opinion. Uh, that's debatable, but the the tire itself is far superior. It's much more squishy. Um, it has a better scale appearance. Uh, so in terms of shock absorbing and visual appearance, you cannot go wrong with these wheels. Absolutely perfect, right out of the packaging. What's also great is that between the 3.5 and, and the 4-inch wheels that I've used on the Hangar 9 P47 that I own, um, the, the wheel hub is the exact same size, so the 3D printable, more detailed hubs that I have, including a brake caliper, I can put directly on this model without having to scale anything. The other detail that I've had to do is I didn't have the uh, uh, domed prop nut, the aluminum domed prop nut. Um, so I didn't know if the one provided by E-Flight would fit this particular motor. So I went ahead and did a 3D printable nose spinner. Uh, that's borrowed from my 
uh, top flight Corsair. I just scaled it down ever so slightly to meet the appropriate size for this model. I know that it works. Some people are scared off by 3D printable spinners, but this one is so tiny that it's really not that much mass that's spinning. I haven't had a single issue with the one that's larger on the top flight Corsair. So uh, I print out of ABS for some of these parts. So um, take it for what you will. Uh, it works for me and I hope it'll work for you too. But enough of me jibbering jabbering on. Uh, this model needs to go fly. I've got a club meeting tonight, which means that I get people to laugh at me if I crash and a cameraman to capture it for you. So let's get out to the field. Well, welcome back out to my field. Uh, it is a very gloomy looking day. Uh, not currently raining, however, the uh, not too distant hills uh, show some pretty heavy haze. So we'll see, but uh, as you can see behind me, the uh, Hellcat is assembled. Now she is fully ready to go at this point. Um, I have done a CG check and I just got done doing a range check. Uh, I went all the way out to that far corner. So we've got a cross, like a cross approach on our runway. So that's the main end of our runway. So I went all the way out there under low power mode and had no signal issues. So our range check is complete. I did some taxi testing, uh, nothing of note there. Tracks true and straight, just the way I set it up uh, from the assembly. Uh, nothing out of the ordinary yet. One thing that's kind of cool to note is uh, the antenna that's kind of easy to lose. Just a little banana connector that sticks in there. You can just throw that in. Your wing bag, leftover wing bag from another model that I've crashed earlier this summer. So I'm gonna wait around, uh, I'm gonna wait around for other members of the club to get here while my batteries finish charging. Um, may not have very much sun to charge the solar system, but solar system's already charged. It's pretty, pretty good thinking ahead. Anyway, I'll check back in with you guys in a bit. Well, I finally have some company here at the field, so we're gonna go ahead, we've got it all powered up and ready to go, and we're gonna go ahead and take care of a maiden flight, so let's go fly. Okay, no wind. All right, so I'm gonna reposition my mic here so I'm not bumping you with my transmitter. All right, pattern is clear, taking off. So even though my center of gravity is a little bit aft of the recommended mark, it does feel still a little bit nose heavy, which is okay. It needs a little bit of right trim. Four minutes. Yeah. Some up trim. All right. So we'll see if the CG changes with gear the gear up. up. Indeed it does. All right. Well, that's good to know. Well, she's flying pretty good. Roll rate's good, nice and snappy. Pretty predictable. Bring her for a nice low pass here. Three minutes. All right, we're gonna take her high and look at her stall characteristics. All right, 
so we're at power off. Just brakes a little bit to the left. I'm feeding just a little bit of rudder here on that turn. Keep myself straight through the turn. Yeah, just a little bit of rudder. Keep myself level. Two minutes. Loop. Very nice, very nice. Not too fast, not too slow. Plenty of power to do the basic maneuvers I'm looking to do with a Warbird. Good visibility, good presence because of the size. I'm pretty pleased with this. It's about a two-third throttle pass. Looks like we've got about a minute left on my timer here. I'm going to put the gear down. Okay, feel that center of gravity shift forward a little bit. Looks like we got two gear down. Looks to be locked. Okay, maneuverability at slow speed is pretty good. Thirty seconds. Very nice. Twenty seconds. Well, there you have it, guys. Uh, airplanes in one piece and ready to fly again. Um, really, no bad habits on this one at all. It is a great, great airplane for a beginner Warbird pilot. Uh, it handles very predictably. The stall is not violent, uh, but it is there, which you need to be aware of and respect, of course. This airplane not having flaps is not an issue. Uh, we have a quite a small field here and there was no issue once I touched down. As you saw, the rollout was fine. Um, really, really happy with this airplane. It's very nice. So to answer the question that I initially posed, is this airplane still relevant? Absolutely, hands down. If you're getting into Warbirds or getting into ARFs that are balsa, I highly recommend this airplane. So go over to horizonhobby.com right now and check it out for yourself. Until next time, guys, I'm Joshua Orchard. Make sure you continue working and building your flying works of art.